We are five weeks through the 2024-2025 NFL season. And normally the playoffs would be about three months away, but today we're not waiting because I have the 14 teams that would be in the NFL playoffs today and I'm going to simulate the entire thing to see who would walk away as the Super Bowl champion. And here is your bracket if the season ended today. And I do want to give a shout out to sportsbettingdime.com. That's where I was able to find the bracket for today's video. But with that being said, let's take a look at the AFC side of the bracket. We have the four seed Buffalo. Buffalo Bills taking on the five seed Pittsburgh Steelers. The three seeded Baltimore Ravens will take on the six seed surprise Denver Broncos are in and the two seed Texans take on the seven seeded Los Angeles Chargers. As for the NFC side, we have the four seeded Seattle Seahawks in a rematch against the Lions that just happened in week four. We have the Atlanta Falcons win the NFC South. They'll take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rematch of week five. And then we finish off the wild card round as the Washington Commanders, the two seed host the seven seed Dallas Cowboys. And then you're going to have the Chiefs and the Vikings as your one seed for the AFC and the NFC. And in our first playoff game, it is in Buffalo as the Bills are taking on the Steelers. They're up by three in a third and 13. A first down would do great for them. Burning clock to win the game, but they actually come up with a stop and the Steelers will have a chance to tie or win. So we jump over now with the Steelers offense. Justin Fields has led his team to the playoffs. The Steelers, Mike Tomlin has done it again. Fryer Muth on the grab getting past the 30. About a minute remaining. Three will get a tie game and maybe overtime for our first playoff game. A touchdown would take the lead for the Steelers. And just missing his receiver was Justin Fields. Justin Fields, do you want to be the starter next year? I mean, you made the playoffs, so you probably would be already. But do you want to cement your spot on the Steelers for years to come? And it's Calvin Austin into field goal range, pretty much. Fields with 51 seconds to get seven and the win, pretty much. That's another catch by Calvin Austin. And he will go all the way. Touchdown, Steelers. They take the lead. And the Steelers are able to stop the Bills as the Steelers will move on and upset Buffalo in round number one. 28 to 24. We got another pretty good ball game here. This one a little bit tougher for the comeback for the Broncos, it looks like. As the Ravens are first and goal from the one and King Henry will punch it in with two minutes and five seconds on the clock to give the Ravens a two touchdown lead. If I'm a Broncos fan, I'm not gonna lie. I'm honestly just happy to be here back in the playoffs because it's been a rough last few years. Bo Nix though, can he create some magic hit in Javante Williams? They're probably gonna try to save their timeouts for an onside kick if they score a touchdown. Down. Obviously, four down territory. Season almost on the line. Bo Nix has Javante in the fly, but Bo Nix is going to go and run. What, Madden? Instead of taking the wide open first down, Bo Nix just threw the ball out of bounds. You can't make that up. Madden, fix your game. And now game on the line. Fourth and two. Nix taking down. The Ravens will move on. With a final score of 38 to 24, the Ravens defend home field and we'll see them in the divisional. Well, there's been a ton of great games so far in the first three matchups. And this one is no different as the Chargers are taking on the Texans in a tied 20 to 20 game with a minute and 54 seconds remaining. Herbert just has to get his team in a field goal range. That could take the lead. If you want to get seven, though, you are playing CJ Stroud. So you never know. You can't get super conservative over the middle. Looking for Lad McConkey. Just couldn't connect with him. Not sure what happened there. He was open. Herbert, pretty solid throw. I'm not sure exactly what went down there. But now it's third and 10. Will they pick up the first? They will. It's going to be Quint. Oh, no. Joshua Palmer. Excuse me. Joshua Palmer to the 25. So it's third and eight for the Chargers right now. If they get a first down, they could kick a game winner. If not, the Texans will get the ball back, and it looks like they will. The Chargers will take a three-point lead, though. Let's just make sure the field goal is good, which it is. Now it's Texans ball. And I forgot they had no timeout, so they have to hustle right back to the line of scrimmage every single time. Over the middle, quick pass to Diggs. That's going to get them some good yards. Still need about 20 yards to get into field goal range. Clock is ticking, not nearly as much as it should. Madden Logic. They never fix these simulations. Over the middle, same play to Diggs. Over the 50-yard line, 39 seconds. Okay, clock is starting to tick a little bit better now. 28 seconds on the clock. Stroud going to hit Nico Collins. Over the 40, breaking a tackle. Actually went backwards. Is going to make it the 41-yard line. And they're going to try to take one more shot, one more play. They are in fair bear range. They're going to try to take one more shot to the end zone. Diggs almost unbelievable in the playoffs once again. Almost made the catch. Instead, it's the field goal to tie the game and send us to overtime. 
And we're going to have a nice kick. It's Kaimi Fairbairn to make this kick and tie the game to send it to overtime. About a 60-yarder. And it's no good. I think it's wide left. Fairbairn missed. Can we see the replay? I think it went left. Yep, went to the left. And the Chargers are going to upset the Texans. With a final score of 23 to 20, the Chargers move on. Another good matchup as we head to the NFC. Lions up four, needing about a first down or two to win this game and move on to round two. It's going to be the run to Amon Ross St. Brown, who's going to pick up four yards. Six more yards, and the Lions should move on. Seattle's timeouts are coming off the board now. 17-13. And with their run game, I would be in trouble if I was a Seahawks fan. If I'm a Seahawks player, I would not like what I'm seeing right now with Montgomery or Gibbs in the backfield. I'm not sure who it's going to be. Amon Ra on a jet sweep. If Madden would ever like to get us to the line of scrimmage with these Super Sims, we will find out. If the Lions get three yards, they win the game, and they will move on to the second round. If Seattle does not let them get three yards, they should have a chance to win it. And we are about to find out which one is going to happen. It's What in the world was that? That might have been the worst play I have ever seen in this game. The run pass option. Geno Smith is taken down, though, almost strip sacked. But the worst play I've ever seen, the run pest option. I have no idea what they were thinking. Jared Goff should have just gave it to Montgomery. Then he threw it into the turf instead of getting it to Jamison Williams. So Seattle gets to keep a timeout. Aaron it down the field. And the Lions are going to pay for that decision as it's going to be Tyler Lockett on a 90-yard touchdown dime from Geno Smith. And if the Lions cannot find a way to at least send this game to overtime, Dan Campbell is going to have some serious questions to answer after this game. So is Jared Goff. Hit as he throws. And making the completion is uh, Sam Laporta. My apologies. Jared Goff went back on the screen for a second. Didn't throw it to himself. Sam Laporta for a catch of five yards. 56 seconds remaining. All three timeouts, though, and it's fourth and five. And the game isn't necessarily on the line here because they do have the three timeouts. But they obviously would like to pick up the fourth, with the, which they do. It's Sam Laporta for a first. So now it's first and ten for the 50. A field goal will tie the game. A touchdown will once again win the game. But a sack may lose the game. Jared Goff is sacked by Leonard Williams. A time that will have to be used. And they just lost 11 yards. Huge sack. Brings the Lions all the way back to the 39. One timeout remaining. Goff almost sacked again. Hits Laporta over the middle. They will get eight yards for that. They got to hustle up to the line of scrimmage. Can't afford to use the timeout. Oh, they did. They used it. This would be a great postseason so far, though. If this was the playoffs and it started today, I would not be mad at any of these games, how they're going so far. But third and 13, focus back on the action. Goff with a dime over the middle. And he hits Jamison Williams well in a field goal range, but they have no timeouts remaining. Madden Logic is going to save them some time on the clock, and they're going to have a chance to take a shot at the end zone. Jared Goff stepping up, firing out of bounds. And they've seen enough. Madden Logic will make them kick the field goal with 19 seconds remaining. Kick is up. Will it be good? This time it is. Tie game. Now, because we have a playoff game that went to overtime and it's not in the Super Bowl, I'm not actually putting these games in a franchise mode, so they won't have playoff overtime rules in effect. So we're going to have to do that on our own. So the first thing I needed to do was restart the game because if a team would have scored a touchdown in that same simulation, they would have won right away. Now, whoever gets the ball first, they're going to count as the first team to receive it in the overtime period, and that'll be the Detroit Lions. So now what we're going to do is jump in live with the Lions. This is going to be playoff off overtime rules so if they are to score a touchdown the Seahawks will still have a chance to touch the ball if the Lions get a field goal the Seahawks will have a chance to touch the ball to win it or tie it and we'll keep playing on until there's a winner if the Lions do not get any points any points after that will result in a win for either the Seahawks or the Lions and we're back into the game a touchdown serious cushion a field goal pressure would be on if Seattle scores a touchdown and wins it Montgomery will get the carry and Montgomery gets to the one the Lions at the one yard line. You're gonna look to punch it in, take a touchdown lead in the overtime period, and Montgomery is stuffed. Second time, maybe the charm for the Lions. Montgomery again, Montgomery touchdown. Seattle needs a touchdown or the Lions are moving on. They're gonna go with two running backs in the backfield. Charbonnet and Walker motioning out Charbonnet. Metcalf to the left. And over the middle, Metcalf, we will have a tied game here. Next score wins it. The only thing that's a negative about this restart is that they don't actually know they're in overtime and they don't know a field goal will win it. So I'm hoping that they kick a game winner. 
I'm hoping that they score a game-winning touchdown and not get Madden Logic out of it. That's not to say I'm rooting against the Seahawks. I'm just rooting against Madden Logic because they don't know they're in overtime. I don't know how Jamison Williams caught that. It would be crazy for them to win it with a touchdown, not even knowing that they don't need one. They just need a field goal. Laporta drops it. Oh, Dan Campbell, do not go for this. Kick the three and win the game. The Seahawks are all giving high fives because they hold them the three, but they don't know three is going to send them out of this game. And the Lions will kick three. No Madden logic here. If they get the field goal, they will move on to round two in the best playoff game. We might see the entire video and the Lions win it. Well, we had our first blowout of the playoffs. Now, I know it was 34-23 to end it, but the Buccaneers were up 34-10. to The Falcons made it a two-score game, but that feels good to have a game just end quickly because as somebody editing these videos, it takes a long time when we have a matchup like the Lions and the Seahawks. So if the Saints win Monday night on Monday Night Football against the Chiefs, I apologize. They would have this spot over the Cowboys but if the Saints lose there's no harm done because I don't think anything else changes in this playoff picture based off Monday Night Football either the Chiefs win or the Saints win that's the only thing that could change the Cowboys would not be in and the Saints would be in and Dak Prescott is taken down by the Commanders third and 16 a field goal will make it a three-point game so not the end of the world but Dak wants it all he's got it all it's Jalen Tolbert Talk about big touchdowns this past week. A big touchdown on a fourth and goal at the end of the game to get them into this playoff situation. And now the rookie, Jaden Daniels, has a chance to get his team in a field goal range, but that one's going to be dropped by Luke McCaffrey. They're going to... Oh, they're punting it. I meant to skip that, but they are punting it. Luke McCaffrey dropped the pass that would have got them the first down closer to field goal range. Now it's going to come down to a stop by this commander's defense to give Daniels another chance at a field goal. So it's Zeke in the backfield. One first down is going to win the Cowboys the game and send them to round two with a hit by Bobby Wagner. Second and 10. Zeke on the carry. Could he get the first? He will! Game over! Dallas wins! And here is our updated playoff bracket going into the divisional round. We've seen this scenario way too often in Kansas City in the playoffs. A tied ball game. 2020. A minute 18 remaining. And Mahomes already gets his team over midfield pass to Justin Watson for 17 yards 58 seconds remaining just needing a field goal to send them to another AFC championship what is that like eight in a row and Mahomes outside to Kelsey and he stays in bounds. so at the 40 yard line it's a tough field goal but it's makeable for Harrison Butker who's money in the playoffs Run, though, to Kareem Hunt, and Hunt's going to get them inside the 40 at the 36. Now, a first down would pretty much end this game and win it for the Chiefs because they could kick a game-winning field goal with no time on the clock. They will run it to Hunt, though, which is going to allow the Chargers to save a timeout with 28 seconds remaining. The Chiefs will kick a field goal. As long as they make it, they take a three-point lead. And let's see the kickoff. 17 seconds. We're jumping in with Herbert. Well, it's basically Hail Mary time. Unless you get lucky enough to get like 25 yards and out of bounds. Herbert, if he's sacked, it's game over. Justin Herbert, what? Stays on his feet, airs it out down the field, incomplete. A little craziness at the end of the game, but the Chiefs will win it 23 to 20. We got an AFC North playoff matchup that's going to come down to the wire as Justin Fields is down four, two and a half minutes remaining. First and 10 inside the red zone. George Pickens into the end zone. Touchdown Steelers. Can they pull off another massive upset? And now it's second and 18 for Lamar Jackson. Under two minutes to go. Needing a field goal to tie. A touchdown to take the lead. AFC Championship on the line. Lamar all day to throw. Airs it out down the field. And the triple coverage. And it's broken up and incomplete. Now in a third and 18. I don't know. They do have three timeouts. Will they punt it if it comes to it? And try to force a punt. But right now, focus on the third down. It's caught by Isaiah. Likely and likely is going to be five yards short of the first. And that completion was good enough to keep the offense on the field. Fourth and four. Oh, Lamar thought he was going to get taken down. He is. But after he picks up the first, that is Lamar type stuff. What a play by Lamar. That was unbelievable to keep this game going. First and 10 now for the 43. Can they get in a Justin Tucker range? Mark Andrews, I can't believe he exists, making a catch for two. Justin Tucker range is about 20 yards away, and he just picked it up pretty much with Andrews. Again, he exists. Fantasy owners around the world want the points to translate to real life. And at the 40-yard line, in a Tucker's range pretty much now, Lamar just can't take a sack, but he's sacked by TJ Watt at the perfect time. TJ Watt says hello to Lamar as they take a timeout. And now with no more timeouts left, this just became challenging. A sack might end the game. 
Lamar over the middle, though. Bateman gonna make a catch, and they will have time to clock it. What are they doing? Madden Logic, Madden Logic, Lamar, no! What are you doing? What happened to the field goal? We are in Minnesota for our next playoff matchup to start the NFC Divisional, where we have Justin Jefferson making a grab for five yards. The Vikings are down by seven because, of course, they are. The Dallas Cowboys do not lose in Madden Simulations. But we have the Vikings, the only 5-0 team at the time recording this video of the Chiefs win. They'll match it. Jordan Addison, though, makes the grab. Does he have enough to win the foot race? No, he doesn't, but it's first and goal inside the tent. That was an unbelievable play, though, by Sam Darnold in a clutch opportunity. And Darnold over the middle this time. It's caught, and that's going to be the touchdown for Trent Sherfield tie game. If this was the real playoffs, I got to say this might be the best NFL playoffs of all time. It's second and 10 for Dak. Five-yard pickup. We're going to jump in on the third and five. Here we go. Dak, third and five. He's going to get taken down, though. No time to throw. Fourth and five. The Vikings are going to have a chance to win it. Arnold with the ball at his own 35. A field goal would win this game if they could take out the remaining time. Darnold going to fire Sherfield, who has the tying touchdown. Going to get it to the 41. I jumped out for one second, and Addison got a 21-yard pickup. So they're at the 37 of the Cowboys. Here comes Micah, though. Don't take a... Don't. Unbelievable. A Darnold dot. Sam Darnold on the run to his left. Throws it to Jefferson. Why are you kicking the field goal now? Do not snap this ball. Do not snap this ball. 23 seconds. Run a play. Do not give the Cowboys time. Oh, I'm so happy they're back at the line of scrimmage. They can legitimately take a knee. Every single play and kick a game winner. Donald Bennett throw. Okay, Aaron Jones on the ground. I don't want to see the Vikings lose due to EA Logic. If they lose, they lose, but I don't want to see them lose to EA Logic. Eight seconds. This is a better field goal time. Eight seconds remaining. This kick will give the Vikings the lead. Kick is up. Kick is good. Six seconds on the clock. One second remaining in this game. The Cowboys are about to be eliminated unless anything absolutely magical happens. No flags. That pass incomplete. The Vikings will hold home field and move on to the NFC Championship. Well, we do have a blowout in the divisional round. The Lions own the Bucs in the playoffs. It's 35-7, and the Buccaneers are going home. And our AFC and NFC Championship games are officially set. It'll be Mahomes and the Chiefs taking on Justin Fields and the Steelers in the AFC Championship. And in the NFC Championship game, it is the one-seed Vikings hosting their division rival, Detroit Lions. And marching into Kansas City, the Steelers jump up to a 20 to 3 lead as they are looking to win the AFC Championship. And the Steelers are going to the Super Bowl, headlined by Justin Fields. The Lions walk into the NFC Championship game and destroy the one seed Minnesota Vikings, which leads to another blowout win. The one seed Vikings get decimated in the NFC Championship. The Lions will be headed to the Super Bowl and get their revenge from last year, which means Super Bowl 59 will feature the Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And making their way onto the field first, wearing their white uniforms is the Pittsburgh Steelers looking for another Super Bowl win but another team trying to go for a Super Bowl win here is the Detroit Lions one of the most storied franchises in NFL history versus one of the worst franchises in NFL history no Super Bowl wins to a bunch of Super Bowl wins first play from scrimmage field to Pickens Super Bowl 59 starts off with a huge bang George Pickens deep what was at 70 yards was it from the 30 I don't even know what happened so fast from the 30 that's a 70 yard touchdown Fields aired it out from like around the 20. Pickens stays in bounds. What a play. Steelers take the lead. That was unbelievable. What a way to kick off the Super Bowl. Both of these teams dominated their opponents. Very shocking. They were both the one seeds in their championship games, respectively. The Vikings for the Lions and the Chiefs for the Steelers. Montgomery, not a 70-yard touchdown, but it was a 14-yard run. And we might be in for the best Super Bowl we have seen in a long time. And the last few were great. I'm not going to lie. So, Jared Goff going to take the snap. Got to block up TJ Watt. That's going to be a catch over the 50-yard line. Go the Lions. Now, we are going to watch their drive. Tim Patrick made the grab for eight. And then after this, we're going to skip through the game. And if it gets close to the end, we are jumping in. And then, obviously, we see the Super Bowl celebration at the end. 
Jared Goff gonna hit Sam Laporta wide open into the 40 ego. Lions look like they're gonna get some sort of points. Even if it's a field goal, I know it might feel a little underwhelming after what we saw the Steelers do. But three isn't bad, but they won't settle for three because Montgomery gets the first. Right back to third down, though. Bunch of weapons on this team. Pick your poison, Jared Goff. Deliver it to anybody, but you got to watch TJ Watt and Cameron Hayward. On the right side of that defensive line, Jamison Williams in motion. Where's Goff going to go? Over the middle, Amon Ross St. Brown, your first Super Bowl grab to the nine-yard line. It's goal to go. So this should be the end of the drive. Either way, they get a field goal, I would imagine, or seven. Or maybe it's a pick. You never know. Jared Goff. Blitz. Pressure. Gets it off Montgomery. We might have a fourth and goal that we go for. The Lions might go for it from their own one. We're about to find out. And I was right. Dan Campbell wants to go for it. I don't blame him. Fourth and goal from the one. Make a statement in the Super Bowl. Montgomery gets in. This is Lions football. What a Super Bowl we are in store for. And I am going to live sim it with all of you as we're going to take a look at this game quarter by quarter, minute by minute. Steelers take the lead. It's 14-10 Pittsburgh. 21-10 Steelers. Lions do get a touchdown and a field goal until the Steelers make it a 28-20 game. Okay, we got to slow this up now. The Steelers are going to punt. It's 28-20. This game has slowed down a little bit. Actually, field goal is blocked. I thought they were on their own side of the field. So the Lions have the ball, needing a touchdown to two-point conversion to tie it. And I was just about to jump in if they got closer. Amon Ross St. Brown touchdown. 44 yards, but the two-point conversion is just as big as the touchdown. If they get it, it's a tied game. And the Steelers will have to try to get some points to win it. If they don't get it, the Steelers can run the clock down. Goff has time. Now pressure collapsing. He's trying. He fumbles, but it's recovered by the Lions. Doesn't matter. It's a two-point conversion, and they're going to have to give it to the Steelers down two with a first down or two at the absolute most would win the Steelers their next Super Bowl trophy, and we are going to jump in. Here we go. Super Bowl can be decided on this play. Fields will throw. Pressure up the middle. Caught by Frymuth. The clock will run, but the Lions will get the ball back as they're going to have to point. How much time will the Lions have the ball with? A minute and seven seconds. They got to get in a field goal range to win it. Goff to the line. No timeouts. The clock will run no matter what unless they get out of bounds. Goff first play. Has time. Will deliver. Laporta is inbounds. Clock isn't running as much as it would in real life thanks to Madden Logic. But it is running. Goff hits Jamison Williams. And he is staying inbounds at the 47 of the Lions. They're going to hustle to the line. Madden Logic is going to save them a bunch of time. Clock basically didn't snap until they got to the line. Goff. Pressure. Airing it out deep. Surprisingly, Amon Ra off the helmet incomplete. Super Bowl again comes down to a play. Fourth and ten. They got to get the first and get out of bounds now to kick the field goal. To win it. Goff. Over the middle. Caught. Will they get to the line? Madden Logic might save the Lions. Four. What is happening? How is there? What? The clock isn't running. Time out by the Steelers to ice the kicker. They're at the 39. I don't even know. Madden Logic is going crazy here. The Super Bowl will be won or lost by this kick. What will it be? Will the Lions be Super Bowl champions? Kick is up. It has the distance. It's off the mark. The Steelers have won Super Bowl 59. And if you've seen my video where I put all 32 teams into a single tournament, the Steelers might be Madden 25's favorite simulation team. And on the podium, Mike Tomlin and Justin Fields, they had a vision in the offseason. Get Russell Wilson out of there. Don't let him be the starter. And Justin Fields is Super Bowl MVP. Well, that's going to do it for the video, everyone. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.